This is Dave, the guru, and another tutorial using Game Salad. In this small series of videos, I'm going to show you some of the basics of saving game attributes in Game Salad. Now, Game Salad doesn't automatically save all your information. Basically, when you build a game and you have provided all the information in your variables that are going to be there, if the game is reset completely, all those variables and all the actors and everything will go back to its original state that you programmed it to be. So when we want certain things to be saved in a game, certain variables or setups in a game to be saved, we have to do that in our coding. So I'm going to show you some basics of just how to do that, how to use the save behaviors. I can't go into all the extensive logic of when you might need to save something. That's stuff that you're going to have to figure out as you learn how to code logic in games out. So I'm going to give you the basic tools today on how to do that. So let's just look at a conventional situation, which is basically doing saving a high score. So we're going to go ahead and let's make a couple game level attributes here. And we'll make them integers. And so we'll do a score. And we'll do a high score. And the reason why we're doing two is because one is going to keep track of the score while the player is playing the game. And the other is going to keep track of his high score that he that was the result of any of the amount of games times he played the game. So we need to track those two in order to be able to notice a high score. So let's go ahead in and we'll just start with making an actor. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to use this actor to display our score. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and say game dot score and we'll go ahead and display that and then let's go ahead and for convenience sake and efficiency we'll just use one actor and we'll go ahead and say display the high score and we'll change the color on that and we'll just lower it below the other one so we'll put this at a negative 30 pixels below our other and we'll just see how that looks we'll drag it onto the screen and span this out a little bit and good there's our there's our two scores side by side so now what we want to do is we want to begin to just look at let's make another actor and we'll use this one to modify the scores so we'll go ahead into this actor and we'll just make a touch is pressed rule and we'll go ahead and grab a change attribute and we'll say when game we'll change game dot score to game dot score and we'll just do plus a hundred let's do it that way so we get plus a hundred and we'll just go ahead back and we have that on our scene so now we have our score and every time we click on it we add totals to the score so now this would this would simulate our game running whether on a device or not and we basically accumulated a score and so if the game were to be reset in other words if the player either quit out the game and uh, then uh, in the background iOS or Android device when they need more memory they'll go ahead and start quitting apps behind the scenes and multitasking they don't always stay running in the background or if the user goes in and manually quits all their apps to make more space if their device seems a bit sluggish and so what will happen is all everything will reset so basically what I just did with the refresh button up here simulates that experience and you can see we've lost our score so what we need to do is we need to save that score and then reload that score. So we're going to go ahead into this actor that we made that we're doing our scoring. And then what we'll do is we're just going to add the save attribute behavior. And we're going to make sure we 
we put it below this line of code. Now, if you were um, doing, say, you wanted to save the, the high score, okay, but we'll just do a basic save right now and a load to just show you what's going on. So we're just going to save game.score and the key, we'll just put a one in there you can type in anything keeping it simple just makes it easier to keep track of them I like to use numbers uh, if I am using a save attribute uh, system because basically what this key does is you could have five attributes let's say that you want to save uh, conditions or information so the computer needs to know which one is what so you're saving everything the key because when you go into load use the key to tell you okay I'm going after this game.score attribute so when we go ahead and grab the load attribute here and we will put this in any kind of code that way it'll automatically load you see the first thing it's asking for is the key so our key is one so it's saying go get save value one okay and then we can decide what attribute we're going to put that into. So we're going to go ahead and let's just, for this demonstration at this point, we'll put it into the high score actor. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in here. And so every time I press, it's going to save that value. It's going to add 100 to the score. It's going to save that value to 1. And then it's going to load it into that. So let's go ahead and just we'll look at it. And you'll see. All right. So now if we recycle the game. See, it goes into our high score. It did the save. And so now our high score is saved. It's 900. So we saved that variable and then we reloaded it. Okay. So we were saving it. And then when it reloaded, it took that saved and plugged it in to the high score count. So now let's say we want to only save when we reach a high score. So what we would do is we would make another rule and we would drag this in here and we would say basically when attribute game.score is greater than game.highscore go ahead and start saving that information. Okay, so it won't start saving until, because we only want to chart the high score. We don't, you know, we're not interested in saving the score per se. Um, if you want to save the score, you can. You can just um, have it just continually save like I had it set up so that if the player comes back and, and, and wants to approach the game after from the place they left off, then you have that saved, okay? So we're just going to do the basics of saving things. So now, basically, let's go ahead back into our attribute. Let's just put a value in the high score. So we can put it in as uh, 100. Let's put it in as 200. And quickly, I'll show you the code working. So let's do 200. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and put 100 on our on our basic score and we'll recycle and what we'll see is it's not going to change anything it doesn't change the value it hasn't didn't save anything so now let's go ahead and let's put 300 and as you'll see it changed and it saved and loaded the attribute so now what you want to do is in your game this load attribute up here you want to make sure that that's put in at the very beginning of your game or insert you may have to insert this into your code in more than one scene because there is a lot of different variables that can happen in the game so in other words a player could the, the game could be a player could completely quit out the game and then it, the game would restart completely from the beginning so then we would want to load all that information that we had saved right at the beginning. So basically right after the splash screen, whatever scene you have is your first scene, you want to be loading all the things that you saved. And then as well, you have the other situation where your player could come, go into a game, could be playing it and leave it for a while and come back and play it again and it's still running in the background. 
and they could come back up and uh, have to say uh, they finished a level or whatever and they completed some information on that level that needs to carry over or whatever. You need to make sure that if they can say they could dump back to a different menu to change some things around. Um, you need to make sure that in those spots as well where you could have those conditions where a player could come back into the game from another menu, you need to load that information as well. Make sure that gets loaded in um, so that you need to just look at your code and look at how your game functions and just see how the potential areas where um, this information could need to be loaded again uh, into the game or as well where it would be saved. So. Uh, we would want to be doing saving across scenes if we're saving scores and high scores. We want to make sure that we're doing this at the point in the game where the score ends and we want to measure a high score. You can't just do it once um, if it's not applicable to how your game is designed. This just shows you how to do the saving. So every time you want to save and in every scene, because every scene and, and actor is isolated to itself, um, you want to make sure that you have this code on each scene where you want information, this information to be saved, even if it's done, you know, duplicate times. If you want this same high score information to be updated from level to level, then you need to make sure that you put the saving um, attribute in there to make sure that it gets saved <clears throat> in those places that you want it. So that's the basics of saving and loading information uh, in your game. And in the next video, we'll go through using tables to save your information. You can find me on the forums under the name Lost Oasis Games. This is Dave, the guru. I'll see you in the next video.